Somebody pull that all problem. things work for the good of them. Romans 828. What did it say? Uh, we know that all things work for We know that all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose, right? So when the scripture says that the blessing of the Lord make you rich and add of no sorrow, then also the scripture says, in all things, give thanks. Did it say that? Yes. All right. Say so in all things, did it say all good things? No. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. I appreciate that. Did it say all good things? No. It said in all things, give thanks. And all things work together for good. That's the word of God, right? right. And the blessing of the Lord make a rich add of no sorrow. So then when we accept the fact that all things are God's blessings, then the, the grief will be more perfectly understood. Hear me. Because when, when things happen that are bad, whoever had something bad happen to them? Okay. Had a couple bad things happen to us recently. Somebody said this morning. You no. Know? But things happen that we don't expect. But when we are sold out to the fact that nothing can happen that God is not in control of, then the sorrow is different. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Because what, what, one, thing I, one thing I'm persuaded of, one thing I'm persuaded of is that when you look at the old covenant, you, Pastor Rochelle talked about who this morning, Abraham and Noah. Yes. When you look at the old covenant, you see the people who follow their creator, right? You look at how they follow. You look at the methods they use. You look at how they trusted a God that they never seen. The scripture says no man has seen God at any time. Did it say that? Mm -hmm. No man has seen God at any time, but the Son of God has manifested him. So what that means is, that don't mean no man has seen Jesus Christ or no man has seen Yahshua. That means no man has looked into the face of the invisible God. Is that what it says? And lived. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, man. I'm trying to be nice. Can y'all release me to just Don't say what I got? Visitors, can I do this? Visitors say, go ahead. <laughs> the visitors says, go ahead and do it. So I'm blaming the visitors. Okay? The scripture said that no man can see God and live. Is that what it says? Yes. All right, let's go to Exodus. Let's see. Let's check this out. See, one, one issue that we have had is that we have interpreted the scripture with our mind instead of interpreting the scripture by the spirit of God. You talk, you know, there are systems in the earth. You know that? There are systems in the earth. There's the thing called the, the ecosystem. Y'all heard of that before? There's a weather system. There's 12 systems in the body. Did y'all know that? You have the urinary system. You have the lymphatic system. You have a reproductive system. You have nine more systems. Look them up. <laughs> okay. The respiratory system, there's 12 systems in the body. So the systems are set. When you have a computer, and don't talk to me about computers because y'all know I build them and tear them down and protect them and all that. When you have a computer, it's called a system. And when the system is intact, but you don't get what you should get from the system, that means there's a thing called user error. Mm. So what does that mean? The Bible has more user errors than any other book on the earth. Come on, come on. Our God in heaven has more users error than any other God in the earth. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. Marriages that are in the kingdom sometimes have more user errors than marriages that are in the world. Come on. I'm just keeping it real. All right? So then the issue has become not that the system is broke, but when the system works, it is not working for you, then it ain't the system that's broke, it's my understanding that's broke. Yes. Am I right or right? Yes. Yeah, there's your options. Okay, now, so, did I give you a verse? Just give me Exodus. No Exodus case. 33. Exodus 33. Now, what? Now, the scripture said no man can see God and live. The reason why the Bible said that is because of our location. What does Luke 17 and 21 say? Luke, don't, don't go to it. Luke 17 and 21, Yahshua speaking. The disciples asked him a question. What question did they asked him? Lord, where is this kingdom? And what did he say to them? He said the kingdom of God don't come with observation. You don't say, look, here's the kingdom, or there's the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, what that word within you don't mean only inside of you. Look it up in the original language. It means the kingdom is in your presence. And why did he say that? Because he was standing right there. Because he was standing right there. So, when the Bible says no man can see God and live, it ain't talking about 
just any person looking at God and living. It's talking about the systems that are in the kingdom that are being set forth will cause you to die if you ain't in the right place when you see God. I'll prove that, Apostle Watson. Thank you, I will. Exodus 33, please. And I want you to read verse, Exodus 33 and verse, uh, come on, Holy Ghost, help a brother out. The scripture said that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Did it say that? Find that verse. Did it say yes? Find that verse. Exodus 33 and what? 12, 13, 14, what verse? Who got it? What verse is it? 11. What does it say? Exodus 33 and 11. Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Uh -huh. As a man, man speaketh unto his friend. So he spoke to Moses how? Face, face to face. Now, if you're in my face, I got to see you. So now, now here, but the scripture said no man can see God and live. Mm -hmm. But he said he spoke to Moses face to face. How do you reconcile that? Is the Bible wrong? Is there a contradiction in the scripture? No. Is the scripture come? No, it's the technology that we use to interpret the scripture. Our technology is off, and because our technology is off, we don't understand, we don't have an answer, so we void and delete the contract. Here's what I mean. There are some people who don't believe that the Holy Spirit can live inside of them. There are some people who don't believe that speaking in tongues is right. You know why they don't believe it? Because they haven't experienced it. And so if I don't experience it, I am not humble enough to say I haven't received it yet, then it can't be real. Like people who never, there, there are some people, I shouldn't say this, it's kind of political, but forget it. There are some people who believe the coronavirus is a hoax. Yes. I was on the elevator with a guy yesterday, and uh, I had, my mask was on. This guy says, this guy, he said something. I said, oh, I said, oh he might have his mask on, so I took mine off. He said, that's a hoax anyway. I said, there we go. <laughs> Y'all know, I tried to resist. I didn't resist. I, I shouldn't have said that, but I did. But anyway, point being, it ain't no hoax. When it affects your family. Uh -huh. It ain't no hoax when your loved one dies. Uh -huh. You see, people who believe that that which is real is the hoax are deceived. Yeah. That's a spirit of deception that was introduced into the earth as another season has opened up. Now, the Bible talks about the end times. It talks about, it talks about the catching away. Are y'all with me? But he's coming to catch away those who are caught away. So if you ain't caught away now, don't expect to be caught away then. You know, people use the term rapture. It's not the Bible, but I know what they're trying to say. I'm waiting for the rapture. Well, if you ain't raptured now, you will not be raptured then. He's coming to rapture those who are raptured. Y'all follow me? So that if your mind ain't already there, then he's not coming to put your mind there. He's coming to take those whose minds are there. That's why the Bible talks about first fruit. You read that? Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 14, the Bible talks about the first fruits. So if there's first fruits, why would you reference a first if there won't be a second or third? It's 30, 60, 100 fold. That's Bob, you keep throwing me off. What verse you at? Read. Still at 11. All right, what does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto him. He spoke friend. to Moses how? Mano, mano, face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Now the scripture, now drop down about a few verses, and it says, No man can see my face and live. What is that at? What verse is that? Now y'all said, you didn't write it down? No, I didn't, because I didn't know what I was going to say. So just bear with it, brother. Yes. Here it is. What verse is that? Uh, 20. Now, now watch how it's worded, people of God. Check the technology of the scripture. Watch how it's worded. What does it say? Uh, Exodus 33 and 20. And he said, uh -huh. thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Oh, well, well why a few verses up and say God spoke to Moses face to face? A few verses down, he said, no man can see me and live. Explain, people of God. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> yes, sir. No. Honestly, I think the Bible is referencing the way that God spoke to Moses. Okay. Not right. that not that his face was in Moses' face. He spoke to Moses as if he was a friend. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. I'll take that. Yes, man. See, baby, you can't raise your hand when I'm up here talking because I'm calling you. Okay, she's back there raising her hand, you little kid. Now, the scripture says, he spoke to Moses face to face. You drop down and it says, no man can see me and live. Read that verse again. Listen closely. There's a word there that brings a distinguishment. There's a word there that changes the whole atmosphere. Read it. What does it say? And he said, And he said, Thou canst not see Thou canst not see me, my face. My face. For there shall no man see me and, and live. live. Now, what's going on here? The children of Israel had said to Moses, we want to hear God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
They said, Moses, you're talking about God and you're seeing God and, and you're fellowship with him. We're a man just like you. Tell God, we said, meet us at, at the uh, crossroads. <laughs> Tell God to meet us at the animal. We want to hear from him for ourselves. All right? We're going to bushwhack him at the path. So God says, okay, all right, I'll meet the children of Israel. Y'all know the story, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll meet the children of Israel, but God gave Moses some instructions. He said, Moses, let me help you out, son. He says, for there no man can see me and live. Is that what it says? Yes. For there no man can see me and live. Where? At the place where I'm meeting the Israelites, there in that carnal realm, no man can see me and live. When Moses talked to God face to face, Moses was on an 80 day fast. 80 days, no food, in the glory. His face was shining like the sun. His hair was white like wool. And he was glorified in the presence of God. He was there in the spirit realm. But he said, in there, in the flesh, you can't see me and live. Yes. Are y'all still here? That's called kingdom technology. When you understand the technological advancement of the scripture, then our minds should be elevated. Am I right or right? So now, look at look at uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. The technology is what's been thrown off. The system has been abused. We want to get things from God without doing what the scriptures say we have to do. We just want a handout. The kingdom of God is not the thrift store. It ain't savers. For those who don't know what savers is, <laughs> what is it kind of like uh well, it's a little upgrade. It's a little, it's a upgrade. It's a upgrade from St. Vincent to Paul, right? St. Vincent ain't the same. Because I've got plenty of stuff from St. Vincent. Y'all didn't even know it. I was clean. Y'all didn't know it. The brother was saved us down. What does it say? First John 3. What's the word? What does it say? First John 3, uh -huh. uh, verse 1. Behold. Behold. What, what manner of love the Father has to show for both us. Now, hold on. Now, here, here, here how the scripture flows. Because when you start... We talked about technology last Sunday, but when you start talking about technology and you start talking about how things operate, the human brain, there are things that are trying to set up to mimic the human body, like a camera. Y'all got cameras and flashes on them. You got binoculars, right? They are simulated or created to imitate the human eye because the human eye has autofocus. The human eye has distance range and close range. And so they try to make cameras and binoculars to mimic the human eye, just like they try to make speakers and sound to mimic the human ear. Everything is like a copy of something. So you have a computer that has a motherboard that has a computer chip in it that tries to mimic the human brain. Are y'all here? And so with that chip, you got to have other structures with it. you got to have memory. you got to have hard drive space. you got to have all these things to make the computer function properly. Now, one thing that will shut the computer down is called lack of memory. Yes. Are y'all here? Let me know if I go too far. I said, Pastor, come back. We can't hear you. Your lips are moving, but you're too far out there. Okay, so the scripture says, the scripture says that our mind be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. So if you have a computer, and many people come to me and say, Apostle, my computer's broke, I need you to fix it. So I'll go into the computer with my stethoscope, is that what you call it? I'll put my stethoscope on the hull of the computer, and I said, well, this computer won't have enough memory in it. What do you mean to have enough memory? Y'all ever heard of RAM? How many of heard that term RAM? I'm not talking about a Dodge RAM, I'm talking about randomly accessed memory. That is the thing in the computer that tells it where to go, when to go, and, it, it, and if your RAM is much, or if your RAM is free, it gets there fast. But if you have an old system, if you have an old system and you're trying to use new technology, it won't work. It's kind of like the Lord said, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. But there are people who are trying to put new wine into old wineskins. Your mind is set. Your mind is made up. You don't believe nothing else new can happen. And somebody's trying to pour revelation into you, but your mind is shut. It's like putting new wine into old wineskins. What happened? That means it's not expandable. And so that new wine is going to begin to grow, and it's going to bust that old wineskin wide open. And then you're going to say, he preaching false doctrine, my head hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh, your head hurt. Because your old wineskins. That's why your head hurt. Your head hurt because you're not expandable. You are not stretchable. God wants us to be expandable. Did he say Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 104? We got to be expandable and our mind has to be open. Come to God how? As 
a child. If you don't come to God as a little child, then the Lord can't really pour into you the way he wants to because children are wide open. Yes. And you got some folks who are closed-minded. Can't tell them nothing. Mm-hmm. You ever run some of those folks? They know everything. Yeah, and I don't care what you're talking about. They already know. Mm-hmm. You meet those kind of people, right? I love them kind of people. Best of people that know everything about the word of God, I love them. I love talking to them. You know why? Because I don't mind trying to learn something. Not so I can show them all, so I can listen and see what they're talking about. Maybe I'll learn something. First John chapter 3. I'm almost done. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, uh-huh. that we should be that called should, the sons of God. That we what? Should. should. We should yes. be called the sons of God. What's that John 3, 16 say? Somebody quote that. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. So Read. That whosoever believeth in him should, should not, perish, not perish, but have everlasting life. Should not perish, have everlasting life. The Bible said we should be called the sons of God. Y'all hear that? You, you he that have an ear, let him hear. The Bible didn't say, the Bible didn't say what matter love the Father bestowed on us because we are the sons of God. It said we should be the sons of God. And then if you apply it right, then it will say that you are the sons after proper application. There are some things you can't skip over. Come on now. You can't skip over the process of living a sanctified holy life. You can't live whatever life you want to live and expect God to bless you with the blessings that are guaranteed in the system of the scriptures. I want to do what I want to do, but I want God to give me what the scripture said I should have, regardless of me doing what he said I should do. Are y'all here? Read. Let's see. Therefore, the world knew with us not. The world didn't didn't know us because they didn't know him. Read. Beloved, now. Okay. Now are we the sons of God. Read the next line. And it does not yet appear. It does not yet appear what we we shall be, but. We know that. We when, know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. We're going to see him as he is. Now, what makes us like him? Give the scripture. We should be like him. Why? Because we shall see him as he is. So then, in order to see him where he is, you got to be located in the right place. If your location is off, then the technology won't produce what it should. It won't produce sonship if your location is off. Are y'all hearing me? Turn, you ever be on the computer or your phone and it says turn on the location? Yes. Or you look at somebody and say turn your location on. Turn on your location so the Spirit of God can locate you. Because if you're located properly, then you can become what God has called you to be. And that is a son. That is the highest calling in the scripture. That apostle ain't the highest calling. Prophet ain't the highest calling. The highest calling is sonship. Yes. Just to become a son of God. You ain't even got to be a preacher. Sorry, preachers, I know y'all watching me, but you ain't got to be a preacher. All you got to do is be a lover of God, holy with your whole heart. Read, Pastor Bobby. It says, we should see him as he is. Yes. That's, now, when you see the Lord as he is, read, what's, something else might happen. And every man that hath this hope. Every man that hath this hope. And him does what? Purify himself even as, as he is pure. So the purification process is what makes you the son of God. The purification process. When you begin to purify yourself, the scripture said, even as he is pure. That's how we become sons. When we purify who? You don't purify your wife. You don't purify your husband. You purify yourself. You purify yourself. When you take on responsibility that it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in need of prayer. So when you get to the place to where you understand that I have to be responsible, I have to be responsible. It's not my ex. Some people, 10 years later, still blaming their ex. I'm just saying, 20 years later, still mad at the person who broke up with you in high school. I'm going to get her. I can't wait to see her. I'm going to get her. I'm going to go to her time. I'm going to find her. And you're a preacher. I'm just saying, there are people who have not let the past go. And if you don't ever let the past go, you can never embrace your future. So the scripture says, read that verse again. Everyone that has hope in him, yeah, purify yeah. himself even as he is yeah. pure. So that means I have to take on the responsibility that it's me. Yes. I'm not going to blame nobody else anymore. I have a responsibility of sonship. 
I have responsibility of maturity. And if the best way for me to lead my wife, to lead my children, I ain't got no, well, to lead my grown children, the best way to do that is for me to be an example. A lot of times the best way to lead is to lead by example. I don't have to tell you what to do. I need to let you see me doing what a leader should do. Am I right or right? Read. We're almost done. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. Read. And ye know that he was manifested he was manifested to take away our sin. To do what? To take away sin. Hold on. He was manifested. Why? To take away our sins. The law was manifested to take away our sins. Did y'all hear that? So we are determined. Now, I'm going to say something. I just want you to hear me, all right? Don't throw your stones. There's stones under the chairs just in case I get off. You can pick them up and throw them at me. But before you do, he that hath no sin. <laughs> the first stone. Okay. All right. So the scripture, the scripture says, the scripture, read, read that last verse again. And ye know that he was manifested to, to take, take away our sins. Sin. Now, now the, the manifestation of the Lord was to remove sin. John saw him coming. What did John say? John said, Behold, the Lamb of God was doing taking away the sin of the world. So, but we are determined, and we are taught by our church leaders, we are taught by our church leaders to profess that we are still sinners. Y'all know that? Y'all know that everybody said, Well, I'm just a sinner. I saw a preacher the other day on Facebook. Before he started preaching, he said, I, Every time before I preach, I have to know that I don't deserve to preach. I don't deserve God's grace. I don't deserve to be. Wow! Where did we get that from? Who told us? Show me that in the Bible. I'm waiting. Show me the Bible where we don't deserve his grace. Show me. I'm waiting. Look for that in the Bible. There's no way in the scripture says we don't deserve. What do you mean we don't deserve his grace? You know what we say? We say Christ paid the debt. No, no, wait. How we say it? We owe the debt that we could not pay. Is that what we said? Christ paid the debt that he did not owe. Christ, wait. We owe the debt that we could not pay. Christ paid the debt. Did not. Did not How many of y'all heard that before? Y'all heard it before? We owe a debt that we could not pay. Christ paid a debt that he did not owe. Show me that in the Bible. That's man mentality. Now I told you it's going to get controversial. Let me, let me go ahead on and open up the whole can since I started. What, what, what did uh, Forrest Gump say he's going to open up? Okay. Anyway, let me open this can up here. I, I know. I know. Okay, so the scripture says that if you have this hope in you, you purify yourself. Even as he is pure. And we know that the Son of God came to take sin away. So then why are we constantly decreeing that we are sinners? Who told us to do that? Who told us to do it? Because we misinterpreted the scripture that said if you say you have no sin, that you are a liar. We misinterpreted the scripture. Yes. The scripture didn't say that if you say you have not sinned, we don't say that I've never sinned. That's not my profession. Right. But I do have sin with me. Why? Because I'm in the human body. My body is subject to sin at any moment. Don't y'all know that? Yes. So, but I ain't a sinner, but my physical body is a sin trap. Yes. Because if I walk in my flesh, I will sin. Yes. Because my human mind has to be purged by the word of God. Romans 12 and 1 says what? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies what? A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what? What is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? So your mind begins to purge 30-fold, which is good. It begins to purge 60-fold, which is acceptable. And it begins to purge 100-fold, which is the perfect will of God. So during the transformation of my mind, I may mess up. I may make some mistakes. I may outright sin. But my mind is still being transformed. Yes. Are y'all here? James Cleveland said what? How do you say it? Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Y'all too young. So James Cleveland said, please be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. So that don't mean that, that I'm not going to grow into a place where I don't make childish mistakes. First Corinthians 13. I'm almost done. I have to keep saying that through the whole message. First Corinthians 13. Um, verse 8, what does it say? This is the word. That's the right verse? Uh, are you talking about, no, are you talking about charity or perfect? Uh, the verse in 1 Corinthians 13 is perfect. One, uh, read verse 6. Verse 6. What does it say? Rejoice is not in iniquity. Keep reading. 
Uh, <laughs> keep reading. Start, start from there and keep going. Good, keep reading. All right. Rejoice if not in iniquity, uh -huh. but rejoice in the truth. Uh -huh. Beareth all things, uh -huh. hopeth all things, things. hopeth all things, endureth all things. Uh -huh. Charity never faileth. Read. But whether there be prophecies. No, no, that's not the one. That's not the one that says when I became a man. What was that? At? Oh, here it is. Verse 11. What does it say? Okay. <laughs> when I was a child. When I was a child. I spake as a child. How did I speak? As a child. Read. I understood as a child. How did I understand? As a child. Read. I thought as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man. But when I became a man. What? I put away childish things. I put things. away childish things. When I grew up in God, I quit acting like a spiritual child. Is that what the scripture says? Amen. So when there comes a point when we grow up in God, when we understand how to properly work the systems of the Bible, the system will grow us up in God. And I won't be walking around as a constant sinner. And people say, well, I'm just a sinner. I'm not. Amen. The Bible says you have whatsoever you say. And I begin to speak out of my mouth that I am the righteousness of God. I can't be a sinner and the righteousness of God. Pick one. Amen. You can't be both. Whether, whether Elijah asked the prophets of Baal, how long hold you between two opinions? Yes. You can't be both. This ain't no hybrid gospel. Come on. We don't run on gas and electricity. Pick one. So we got to understand this. Now keep reading. Keep reading. For now we see through a glass, darkly. Not there. First John 3. First John 3. But then face to face. That's a good verse. First John 3. <laughs> All right. I got to be where I was. It says he was manifested to take away our sins. What else? Oh, oh here it is. For we shall see him as he is. Uh -huh. um, and every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whomsoever committed sin transgresses the law, for uh -huh. sin is a transgression of the law. Keep reading. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In him is what? In, in him is no sin. Okay, how many of y'all are in Christ? I am. Don't be scared now. Are you in Christ? I am. And what's in him? No sin. But the problem is, we have been working the system wrong, so sin still is dominant in us. Paul said, when you yield your members as servants to, then will you obey. So if you yield your members as servants to sin, you don't have to sin, you choose to. Because he came to take sin away. He purified us. Paul, Paul says something very scary. I, I, I still don't understand this, but I just quote it. Paul said, even if I sin, it ain't me, it's the sin to live in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? Y'all ever read that? Mm -hmm. Paul said, even if I sin, it ain't me. Mm -hmm. It's the sin to live in my flesh. Paul, what are you saying? So if you slap me, Paul, I can't slap you back. I got to slap the sin to live in your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all never read that verse before? Anybody never read that verse before? Everybody read it? Great. It's in, it's in Romans chapter 7. Paul said, even if I do sin, it ain't me. It's the sin to live in my flesh. So what Paul is saying is, I am free. Yes. Paul is saying, I am free. Keep reading. We're almost done. I got about two more times to say that. Whomsoever abideth in him sinneth not. Uh -huh. Whosoever abideth in God is what? Is not sin. Did y'all see that? If you're in him, you will not sin. Read. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Oh, I ain't going to mess with that. That's kind of rough. Read. <laughs> Little children, uh -huh. let no man deceive you. Uh -huh. He that doeth righteousness is, is righteous, righteous. Read. even as he is righteous. Uh -huh. He that committed sin is of the devil. He that committed sin, continue to sin. If you are in God and you continue to sin, y'all get that? It don't mean that if you commit a sin. If you, he that committed continually committing sin is not of God. Because the Bible said if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Right? So if you sin, just repent. Don't boo-hoo over and make your whole life over. Just repent. I remember when I first got saved, and, and about a year went by, like 1981. I had been saved for a year. I just got ordained to preach 1980 or 81, whatever it was. And uh, I remember my, my, uh, my girlfriend acted up, so I had to give her a piece of my mind. And I started cursing. Man, I was, I, I, the words came. I wasn't saying, I didn't say hell. That's in the Bible. I didn't say damn. That's in the Bible. I ain't cussing now. I'm just saying. That's in the Bible, right? There's another word. There's an ass. I didn't say that either. That's in the Bible. <laughs> that's in the Bible. But I was using the choice words. I don't know what y'all think about it. They was coming out. And it was coming out. And it was coming out fluent, too. Man, I was cussing good. Like I had never quit. And man, after I got done cussing her out, 
I, about an hour later, I was so condemned. And I called my dad. I said, oh, I'm crying. Oh, Bishop, I need to be baptized again. Oh, take me in the water. Do something. Pray over me. Give me the Holy Ghost. Play, do something. And my dad is laughing on the phone. Like, what you laughing for, man? This is serious. This boy got real. The stuff don't hit the fan. Okay. And he said, boy, just repent. It can't be that easy. I got to get 12 lashings or something. You got to send the deacons over to beat me. Something got to happen. He said, Jess, repent. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. I don't have to go to the priest. Nobody got to make the sign of the cross over me. Just repent. Mm -hmm. And that was a mind blower. I repented, but I still didn't feel good. I still felt bad. You know why? Because I had a sin conscience. And because usually human beings, who was the last person to forgive you? Yes, you are. So I was holding myself hostage. I was, but I was free. But I was holding myself hostage. But when I begin to grow in God and understand that I don't have to sin, then my mindset changes. Keep reading. We're almost there. Read. What is it? He that committed sin is of the devil, uh -huh. and the devil sinned it from the beginning. The devil sinned it from the beginning. Read. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. Why? That he might destroy the works of so the devil. So he might destroy the works of the devil. Read. Whosoever is born of Whosoever God. Whosoever is born of God. Does not commit sin. Uh oh. For his seed remaineth in him, and, and he cannot, he cannot sin. sin. Did y'all read that? If you're born of God, you cannot continue to sin, is what the Bible's saying. Why? Because the seed of God is in you, and you cannot sin. That, what that's saying is sin will never dominate you again when your mind is made up. But the messages have been so weak and watered down. We've been preaching, telling people it's okay to sin. We've been telling people, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. If it wasn't up for the Lord, ah! And we got people weak and they're scared to fight the devil. And when the devil comes, they're running. Why? Because we don't think we have no power. Let me tell you something. I devil, dog, dare the devil to show up in my house. I dare him. Devil, dog, dare. That's from the 70s. Y'all don't understand. I dare the devil to show up. I ain't afraid of the devil. He's afraid of me. Amen. Why y'all talking about the devil? I cast the devil, I need to open up a business. You know those businesses of people that go around and they cast demons out of houses? I need to start a business. I cast the devil out of your house, out of your tree, out of your dog, your cat, wherever you hiding at. Wherever you hiding at. I cast him out. Stop it. So understand, we are not afraid of the devil, right? All right, last verse, St. John 3. Last verse. We'll go to 1 John 3 to St. John 3. Last verse. I don't really want to talk about the text, technology, but I have to read. What is it? St. John 3, start verse 1. St. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees uh -huh. named Nicodemus, man, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Uh -huh. The same came to Jesus by night uh -huh. and said unto him. Now, we, we said Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he was uh, embarrassed. That, that's not. Read this. Read. That ain't even true. Read, read. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Uh -huh. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born? Wait now, wait now, wait, wait now. Hold on. Nicodemus said to the Lord, I know you got to be blah, 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 these miracles, God is with you. And notice how the Lord ignored him. The Lord ignored him and said, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is like that. What that got to do with it? Yes. How is that helping me? I just told you I need $20, and you said jump up and down three times. That, I'll give you some money. So basically the Lord said something different. Read. Watch this. Now the Lord makes a statement here. Some of these things that I read in the Bible, they really baffle my mind because I'm thinking, is this? Read. What does it say? Nicodemus saith unto you, how can a man be born when he is old? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time? Can he crawl he back up in there and be born again? He, that's what the Bible said. He said, can he go back up in his mother's womb? What if she dead? We go open the casket? Well, I, I don't know. He says, he says can, can I go back in my mother's womb and be born? And Nicodemus ain't playing. He's serious. Read. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. except the man be born of, of the water, water and spirit. of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Born of water and spirit. Now read. Keep going. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Here, wait. That which is born of flesh, what? Is flesh. Read the next line. 
and that which is born of the Spirit is, is spirit. spirit. How many of y'all have been born in the Spirit? Been born in the Spirit? If you've been born in the Spirit, the Scripture said that which is born of the Spirit Amen. is Spirit. So are you Spirit or are you flesh? Y'all know the saying. I'm not a human having a spiritual experience. I'm a spirit having a human experience. When we understand who we are in God, our lives will change. When we understand that we have to properly connect the issues in the scriptures and rightly divide the word of truth, then the word will come alive to us and we will manifest what the word has called us to manifest. We won't walk in fear. Why? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, all right? He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. We won't walk in, in poverty. Why? Because the scripture says in uh, what is it, Matthew 6, 33, quote it for me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We don't have to walk in all these degraded states because now we are manifesting what the word says we should have. Why? Because I got my computer updated, I received the latest download, I got my antivirus working, and I got about 16 a 32 megabyte of RAM, let's say 64 mega RAM, we're gonna upgrade the computer. Got my 64 mega RAM, got two terabyte hard drive space, my CPU is 4.0, I'm rocking! That's with me. Give me the software, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And I'll run it. Why? Because everything in me, all the components are there. The reason why we don't run well in the body of Christ, because we don't have all the components that we need. We're trying to operate with two mega RAM. And the software says you need to have six. You can't operate Windows 10 without six mega RAM. You can, you can run it with four, but you gotta run it in safe mode. Am I right or right? You gotta run it in safe mode. If you get out of safe mode, you need six gig of RAM. I know some of y'all say, what are you talking about? Just, just bear with me. You gotta have at least six gig of RAM because the latest Windows update calls for you to have six gig of RAM. Am I right, Elder? You know I'm telling the truth. I was trying to upgrade her computer. I said, how much RAM do you got? She's like, I got four gig, Apostle. And I said, well, I've got good news and bad news. <laughs> You gotta have at least six. Get, they, now, now hear this. The Bible said the strong meat is for them that have had their senses sharpened power by reason of use. And iron sharpens iron. Yes. You will not grow in God hanging around people who are beneath you. Come on. Yeah. If you want to grow in God, find somebody stronger than you. Find somebody that's not afraid of the devil. Find somebody that got the knowledge of God and walk in it and hang on to that coat. Find them. I told y'all when I met Apostle G.E. Bradshaw, I grabbed onto his past leg. He had to walk around dragging me. I heard that brother say, oh, 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 whoa. I grabbed the hold. I held onto his past leg for 15 years. So that's, that's the bead out of his hand. Give me that bead. Call me fools here. Apostle Bradshaw raised me. He fathered me. He taught me. And I held on. I held on. And now I got the grasp, I had to grasp the technology. I was in school with him for 15, 16 years. And finally I graduated. And now I have the technology down, and now the devil fears me. Did I say the last verse? I did, didn't I? I repent. Y'all forgive me? All right, Philippians 3, last verse. Hallelujah. Is it Philippians 3? Yes, yeah, go to Philippians 3, 11. 3, 8, 3, 8. Philippians 3 yeah. and 8. What is it? Yea, doubtless, uh -huh. and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my uh -huh. Lord, uh -huh. for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, mm -hmm. and do count them but done. Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things. That's what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. When you give up everything, you don't have no choice. Read. I don't have an option. Okay? Backsliding is not an option for me. It's not. I'm in. It's not. I don't have an option of going back. Why do you think they call it backsliding anyway? Why do, you, why do they call it backsliding? You know why they call it backsliding? Because the way is tight and narrow. You ain't enough room to turn around. You got to go back. Yeah, so, okay. Read. Okay. Um, uh, that I may win Christ and be uh, found in him, not having my own righteousness, which, which is, is of the law, law uh -huh. but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Read that I may know him and, and the power of his resurrection mm -hmm. and the fellowship of his suffering Read. being made conformable unto, unto his, his death. death. The power of the resurrection makes us conformable. Read, I ain't gonna mess with it. Read. 
if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Read. Not as though I had already attained, but either were already perfect, but I, I, follow, I after, follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Let me give you a little quick Bible lesson here. Let me give you a quick lesson in Ortho Tomeo. Okay? Ortho Tomeo is what? What is Ortho Tomeo? Right, right in the Bible, the word of truth. Give you a quick lesson. Paul said, not that I've already attained, already became perfect. You know what he said? Yes. But I follow after that. Now, when Paul said that, two years later in 2 Timothy, Paul said, now I'm ready and I am perfect. When you read the scripture and you follow the, the chain of the scripture, you follow the technology of the scripture, you'll see that the times are passing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul said, there's a man in you, in your congregation, that's doing things that the Gentiles didn't do. Kick the man out for the destruction of the flesh. Did you say that? That the spirit may be saved and dear the Lord. But you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2, and 3, Paul said, then fight the man back. Yeah. See, people preach about when they kick that old devil out, but they don't preach about when, when the man repented. Paul said, bring them back. So Paul said here, I'm not yet made perfect. But in 2 Timothy, two years later, Paul said, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to be poured out. Just want to throw that at you just in case you know, somebody misunderstands the scripture. Read. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. What is he doing? Forgetting those things which are behind. I am Read. And reaching forth unto those That's things what? which are before. What I'm doing. I press toward I press the mark of the prize the of the high of the calling of, the high of, the high of God Christ Jesus. Jesus. When Paul said that, this is my last statement, then the credits are on a roll. Paul said that. Paul said that I do what? I press toward the mark. Everybody say this word. Dio Kos. Say it again. Dio Kos. That word, press, simply means to press harder against your trials then they're pressing against you. Paul literally said, I became a trial to my trials. The devil came to try me, I ended up trying him. Did y'all hear that? The devil came to my house, where's that, where you at? I come to get you. I said, devil, where you at? I came to get you. Hey, the devil said, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what Who's the big bad wolf here? Me? You see, the enemy has a mandate from God to test the saints. You better believe Y'all think the devil is operating of his own accord? No, he isn't. No, he isn't. The Bible said in Romans 13, there ain't but one power. There ain't but one power, and the powers that be are ordained of God. So the devil comes to try you, and when you defeat him, guess what he's going to do? He's going to come back. You know why? Because he knows the flesh is vulnerable, and he knows that you might get weak, so he's going to come back and check. He's going to keep on coming back. And guess what? I know the flesh is vulnerable, so I'm going to stay under the hand of God. I'm going to stay in the realm of God. So whenever the devil comes back, guess what I am? Ready. Amen. Ain't getting ready. I am ready. Amen. I'm not waiting to get caught up. I'm caught up already. Amen. So whenever the devil comes to me, guess what? I'm ready. Waiting on him. Matter of fact, if y'all see the devil, tell him I'm looking for him. <laughs> when he comes to get you, so leave me alone, Apostle West, I'm looking for you anyway. <laughs> Tell him that. You know why? Because I fear not him. All the devil can do is strengthen you. If you, the Bible says your trials come to make you strong. Amen. To make you strong. Amen. Right, close your Bibles. Shut down your iPads, your iPhones. Okay. If you're bougie, right? Turn your iPhone off if you're bougie. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't God awesome? You know, there, there, there are some things in the Word of God that are mind-blowing. And we, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to win friends. I'm not. My goal is to manifest the Spirit of God. My goal is to manifest the, the worthiness of Yeshua. To walk in Him. That's the goal. That's the goal. The goal is not to make people happy. You don't, you don't preach the gospel to make people happy. As a matter of fact, what we're doing in here, this ain't even ministry. This is church service and preaching. Ministry is out there. Am I right? What they're doing in the tent, that's ministry. What they're doing in the tent, that's ministry. They're giving away stuff and blessing folk and giving people stuff. And I want to run up there and get some shoes myself. There was lady shoes. I still want to go get them. <laughs> is there ever a pair of ladies' uh, shoes? What size? Well, I can't remember what size. I don't even think they call the size out. But I was ready to go get that. That's real ministry, people. Giving away food and, and feeding folks and clothing people, housing people. That's ministry. This is church. This is where you come to learn about ministry. And you go out there and you do ministry. Amen. Am I right or right? Hallelujah. Let's stand. Praise God.